Hello. This week we're going to finish up our discussion of administrative law. Last week we talked about rulemaking and administrative regulations or just regulations. And as I mentioned, regulations are a form of primary law and they have the same force as statutory law that's created by the legislature. And today we're going to focus on an entirely different form of federal administrative law, administrative agency decisions. So when agencies issue these kind of decisions, they're acting in their quasi-judicial role rather than the quasi-legislative role that they act in when they issue regulations. Agency administrative decisions can range in procedural format from informal and private to complex on a full judicial scale. As a result, administrative law covers a wide variety of materials ranging from in-house memoranda to lengthy opinions written by administrative law judges. We'll spend the rest of the class talking about the most important administrative decision materials. And in class, we'll talk about how to find these materials using electronic legal research platforms such as Lexis, Westlaw, and some of our specialized databases such as Cheetah. In this video lecture, though, we'll spend some time exploring how we can find administrative materials for free using the federal agency websites. So as you probably remember from last week, we talked about that administrative agencies have quasi-legislative function, and then that's the rulemaking process that results in regulations. And that capacity, they're acting like a legislator and creating a body of written law like the legislator creates legislation. Of course, executive agencies also have an executive function since they're part of the executive branch, which means that they have the authority to investigate potential violations of regulations and to prosecute violators. And then finally, agencies have a quasi-judicial function that they perform, and that's when they hold hearings, subpoena witnesses, impose penalties, and or order monetary damages or injunctive relief. So when agencies are conducting this kind of administrative adjudication, the procedure that they follow is generally not as formal as that that you would find in a court. Administrative tribunals are ordinarily not restricted by the technical or formal rules of procedure or evidence that govern trials before a court. The procedural rules observed actually varies from agency to agency and adjudication to adjudication, so it makes it tough for us as legal researchers. Most agencies have the authority to adjudicate issue and hold these administrative adjudications, either under their enabling statute or under their own regulations. Agencies exercise this quasi-judicial authority in a number of different ways. Either regulated parties can bring issues before them and they're seeking redress, and conversely, agencies can also sometimes compel regulated parties to appear before the agency in the course of an enforcement or a similar type proceeding. Many administrative adjudications are presided over by administrative law judges or ALJs. ALJs usually work with a particular agency and they become experts in a particular kind of administrative law. In any case, agencies do have an appeal process in place. Normally, there's several steps to an appeal within the agency itself with the secretary of the agency having the final say. And it's only when the agency's internal appeals process has been exhausted that a complaining party has the right of appeal to the courts. And you'll actually see sometimes court proceedings where that is the argument whether or not the party who's complaining and who wants to get into the court has actually exhausted all of their internal appeals before they can move on to a court proceeding. So, as I said, different agencies engage in different types of adjudications, which in the end results in different types of agency rulings or agency decisions. At one end of the spectrum, agencies can issue advisory decisions, which attempt to explain or clarify a regulation or other agency policies. What's two good examples that you've probably heard of these kind of adjudications, if you can even call this an adjudication, a no action letter issued by the SEC and a private letter ruling issued by the IRS. The next level going up in amount of complexity in these sort of agency adjudications is an informal adjudication. And then procedure for informal adjudications are not prescribed by the APA. So procedural rules for these types of adjudication can be either prescribed by the agency's enabling statute, as I mentioned, when Congress creates them, they might have some procedural rules in there or they're left to the agency's discretion to devise on its own, and that can either be done by formal regulation that you could find that went through the rulemaking process, or just something that's kind of an internal document that the agency has put forth to describe its procedural rules, its rules of evidence, its due process, etc. The last type of agency decision that we'll talk about are formal adjudications, and these are the most complex and the most akin to a court proceeding. These kind of adjudications usually arise from disputes regarding the interpretation or violation of an agency's enabling statute or its regulation. They usually involve fact-finding inquiries into how a regulation applies to a specific situation. And while agencies are not generally bound by prior decisions, there's no concept of stare decisis like there is in the courts. 
decisions do have some precedential value to attorneys who are practicing before a particular agency. It's always good to be able to point out that there was a similar fact situation and an agency came down in favor of the party who was similar to your own regulated client. Procedural rules for these kind of adjudications are usually set forth in the APA and that governs things like due process, burden of proof, and rules of evidence. So during the class lecture, we're going to spend a fair amount of time talking about how you can use Lexis, Westlaw, and other electronic and print resources to find administrative agency decisions. For now, though, let's just take a look at how you can find these decisions for free on the internet using the federal agency websites. So to get started on the web, a good place to go is the United States Government Manual. It's an annual federal government directory, and it's a good place to look when you're trying to figure out what agency might have authority over a legal issue you're researching. So if you were new to an area or you're brand new just out of law school and you don't even know the agency that regulates your particular issue, this is a good place to go. The U.S. government manual is available both in print and online, and you can search or browse this source. So if you're looking for background information on a federal agency's power and its pronouncements, you can get that here. It also cites the statutes under which the agency operates and explains the agency's function and its major operating units. And then finally, the manual includes sources of information and organizational charts for most major agencies. All right, so let's just take a look at this U.S. government manual and see how I actually would use it to find out what an agency that I was interested in was up to and how they issued their administrative adjudication. First, from the home page of the U.S. government manual, I'm going to select this drop down and then go to executive branch departments. And then once there, I can look at whichever department or agency I'm interested in. Here's the Department of Commerce, and you can see they're listing all of the major officers and secretaries that are involved in this department. They have an organizational chart, and then it goes down from there. Here's the similar page for the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. It kind of gives you an idea of what they do, who they regulate, what sorts of issues that they're involved in. And then you can go from there. There's always a direct link to, as you see up there, for the USPTO. You can go there to its website and start looking for the administrative adjudications yourself. So in addition to adjudications, agency websites can also be a good source of all kinds of other administrative agency materials, including regulations, as we talked about last week, as well as interpretations, directives, and guidance documents. So here on the FDA website, we can get current information about recalls on FDA products. So that might be something if you're representing a food manufacturer you'd be interested in or a consumer. If you were a plaintiff's attorney and you wanted to sue a food manufacturer, you might be interested in finding out what was going on in the recall front. So here, right from the homepage, we'd go to recalls, and there we can get current information about all of the foods that are subject to a recall. Now let's go ahead and look for agency decisions on an administrative agency's website. From the NLRB homepage, I'll select cases and decisions, and then ALJ decisions, although you can see that there are plenty of other administrative adjudications that I could have taken a look at. It just depends on your issue. Here you can see the most recent NLRB ALJ decisions. I can browse these, or I can do a keyword search here. If I want to look at a decision, I click on the link. You can read it just like a judicial opinion, and hopefully it would help you to figure out what would happen to your client if the case were factually similar. Alternatively, I can just click on the case number if I want to get a docket of this particular case. So here we are in the U.S. Department of Labor site, and you can search or browse DOL's adjudication. DOL has a huge number of adjudications due to the subject matter that this agency handles, which is employee relations. That's obviously a very broad area. So first, I'm going to navigate to the ALJ page. And once here, I can run a keyword search or I can browse recent decisions. I can just sort of go and look under the particular topic area. So if I was looking for something under the Davis-Bacon Act, which I don't know what that is, but say I were an employee relations attorney and I needed to know all about all the recent adjudications that the Department of Labor had handled that considered the Davis-Bacon Act, this would be the place to go. Similar decisions are available on the New York State Department of Labor website. So now we're switching over to state administrative adjudications. So first I would go to the New York DOL website, and then once there, I would select legal, and then I would choose adjudication decisions. Now, like the federal DOL site, you can browse by subject, or you can run a keyword search to find New York State DOL adjudications relevant to your topic. So here we are on that page. You can see I can browse down below if I'm interested in explosives or if I'm interested in asbestos, 
or I can go up here and I can do a keyword search to try and find a decision. All right, so that's it for the video lecture. It was a short lecture this week because we have a lot to cover in class. In class, the first thing we do is you'll all present your agencies in your teams, and we'll learn a little bit more about what your agency makes available on its website, adjudications, policies, guidance documents, etc. And then I'll do my class lecture, and in that I'll show you how to find administrative adjudications using Lexis, Westlaw, Hein Online, and various other different loose leaf services. And then if we have time, you'll do a New York State research exercise where you'll have to identify the governing agency and then search for an internal the relevant agency document to help you solve your client's legal problem. Don't forget to take the week 8 quiz and submit your results and I'm looking forward to hearing your presentations in class.